Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I want to do an end of the year video. You know, one of those where I tell you what my favorite audio pieces were that I've reviewed this year. Now I had around 51 pieces sent to me this year for review. I did not review all of them. Some got sent back, but out of the ones I did review, I have some really clear favorites. And this year brought to these ears some of the nicest sounding audio products I've heard in my lifetime. So I want to share with you, we're going to count down from 10 to 1 uh, of my 10 favorite items that I reviewed this year. And we're going to end up at number one, and it's not going to be what you think it is. So let's get started. The 10 best hi-fi products that I reviewed in 2023. Let's start with number 10. So the number 10 favorite item I reviewed this year actually came out at the end of 2022, but I've been using these all year long. I use them at least five days a week, and I'm talking about the Focal Bathys wireless Bluetooth headphones. These are noise canceling as well. Now, the reason I love these is because I use them a few days a week, and I use them when I edit video on my computer keeps the surroundings completely silent. I use them outside when I'm doing yard work. Maybe I'm using uh, a trimmer or a chainsaw or a blower. Uh, I wear these and it keeps that noise level down while providing beautiful music. Now these also sound fantastic if you listen to music with them. And there are some nights I sit on the couch just with my Focals and I listen to music from my phone. These are a fantastic set of Bluetooth headphones. I actually prefer them to the Mark Levinson branded, I think it's the 5909 that I also reviewed last year. Uh, the Bathys has stuck with me. They're in use every day. I've used them on my riding mower. I just wipe them down and they still keep going. I love the battery life, the sound quality, the design and style, as well as the noise canceling. Sure, you can get a ton. There are a ton of noise canceling headphones out there, but if you want a set that is a step above in sound quality and everything else from build to design to battery, take a look at the Focal Bathys headphones. I love mine. And I will link to the review in the description below of everything I'm talking about today. So let's move right along to number nine. So number nine was unexpected really. Now these are something I reviewed a few months ago. They are from Triangle and they are called the AIO Twin, which is all-in-one twin. There's two little speakers, they're all-in-one because the amp, the DAC, everything is inside the speaker. You basically plug it in, hook up the left speaker to the right with the included cable, and uh, you can listen to Bluetooth, you can stream uh, music, you can hook it up to your television, uh, which is what I did. And I just used an optical out from my TV. I'm not using HDMI because these do not have the HDMI uh, connection for your television, but they do work fantastic with the optical connection. Whenever we watch a movie, a show, anything that has a good soundtrack, we turn these on in the bedroom and they sound way better than I would have ever expected. The bass punch from these is really, really nice to have. Uh, so for us, it was a huge upgrade in our bedroom and we have them on the dresser with our TV. These speakers are something that I did not expect to fall in love with, but they have a purpose. They come in at under a grand and they sound fantastic with music, especially if you put them on little stands and set them up properly. They will reward you with beautiful full range sound from top to bottom. Uh, beautiful little speakers. I have the blue ones, but they come in multiple colors. These are the AIO all-in-one twins from Triangle. Really fantastic set of speakers, whether you're using them for music or even movies. So what is number eight on the list as we climb our way to number one? Number eight is a product that came in that really surprised me. It's $219. It's a fully functional streamer. It has a DAC. You can stream Spotify, Tidal, Cobas, what have you directly to it. It comes with a remote control. And I'm talking about the Wim Pro Plus streamer. Now, this is a streamer if you're getting into audio or if you're just using a computer. Believe me, even the little Wim Pro Plus will be an improvement over your computer going into your audio system. 
I believe that if you're serious about digital music, you really do need a streamer in your system. And the WinPro Plus is one that you can buy and use. It's gonna be reliable, it's gonna work great, and it's not gonna bust your wallet wide open. $219 is unheard of in the hi-fi realm, especially for something like this that performs so well. Now it's not gonna win any awards in the style or design. It's built kind of cheap, it feels kind of hollow, but it's equivalent to a Blue Sound node, for example, which is also a streamer and DAC, but it comes in for a few hundred more dollars. Everything is cool with the WIM Pro Plus. I think WIM is going to be doing some fantastic things in the future for those of us who don't wanna spend thousands of dollars on their audio system. If you're looking for a streamer and you want to get started with streaming, check out the Wim Pro Plus. Very, very excellent device for very little money. And I put this on the list not because it has this all-out performance or it's the best I've ever heard. It's on this list because it's so affordable for the quality that it does give you. Anyone starting out with streaming, this is what I would recommend. And today, I even recommend it over something like the Blue Sound Node. And now the Node's going to be uh, have a nicer look and design and a little better feel, but performance-wise, they're about equal uh, from my experience. And I still have the Wim Pro Plus here. I have a Blue Sound Note here. I have four or five streamers here right now. So the Wim Pro Plus, because it's such a huge bang for the buck product, made it to the list. So let's keep going right along and see what number seven. So number seven is a product I reviewed many, many months ago, earlier in the year. And it is an integrated amplifier that I really fell in love with. Um, and it would still be here today if I didn't have so much gear coming in all the time. I need to make space. I'm talking about the Billy Mark II integrated amp. Now, this is a really, really nice design. It's kind of compact, but it's not tiny. It's hefty, but it's not going to break your back. It's a hybrid, so it's Class D mixed with Class A tubes for the preamp. Class D amplification, Class A tube preamp. It comes with a remote control, and it has drive, punch, kick. Um, you know, I really fell in love with this amp when it was powering the Focal Diablos. Those are 20-some thousand dollar retail speakers, yet here was this $2,000 or so integrated amp powering them with ease and with a sound I preferred to the much more pricey options I had here. It has a warm mid-range, so it has some punch in the mids, which can really make you groove and move, move when you're listening to music. It was great with all kinds of music, but also really good with rock and metal and EDM, just because of that rhythmic drive that it has. Now, I fell in love with the looks of the Billy. Looks very stunning, very classy, very modern, very mid-century modern in a way. You can choose different color knobs for it. You can customize it to your liking. Um, and yeah, it's just an all around really, really great integrated amp that's not going to cost you $10,000. This is a really cool piece. I still have vivid and wonderful memories of the Billy Mark II from Heaven 11 Audio. Check it out if you can. And if it's in your price range, uh, there's something special about the way this melds that Class D amplification with the Class A tubes. So be sure to not miss the Billy Mark II integrated amp. I'll link to the review if you missed it in the description below. So let's get right along here to number six. Now, when I reviewed this piece earlier in the year, I was crazy excited about it. And there's a reason I was crazy excited about it. It's because it competes with another product that costs triple the money. I'm talking about the Weiss DAC 204. When I received the 204 DAC, for review, I was like, oh, this looks like a plain little silver box. I'm sure it's going to sound good, but I didn't expect it to have the all-out sound character of the $9,000 Weiss DAC 501. And it's like 98, 99% a similar character, similar sound. But you're paying uh, 20 some hundred for it instead of $9,000. So that was the reason for my excitement. Here we are getting a way more affordable DAC that gives you the high-end studio sound. To me, it sounded like reel-to-reel -reel tape. Very correct, very neutral. You hear all the details, but it also had body to it. It was not, you know, bare or lean, which I can't stand. 
So it sounded really, really, really nice. The Weiss DAC 204, in my opinion, is a high-end kind of bargain because you're getting a high-end sound, but you're paying that mid-fi price. So the Weiss DAC 204, I can still highly recommend it. If you're looking for a detailed sound that sounds something like you're right in the studio with the performers, it's not an ethereal kind of DAC, but it's a more neutral, correct, uh, gives you everything kind of DAC without being lean, harsh, or grainy. And that's what's really cool about the Weiss DACs. They give you all of that information, but they're non-fatiguing. That's really cool. So the Weiss DAC 204, a bona fide hi-fi buy if you're looking for a high-end sound for your higher-end system. This DAC can be right at home in a $50,000, $70,000 system, and it will not be the bottleneck of that system. All right, number five brings me to a piece that warms my heart. I'm talking about the Choco Sound EMEI Integrated Amp. You know, sometimes less is more, and this little amp only has a couple of inputs, uh, and that's it. It comes with a remote, it's got a hefty solid build, but it's compact, so it's very dense, has a nice design with a window where you can see inside through the top, and the sound is just luscious. It's warm, the bass is big. Um, there's still plenty of detail and transparency here, but to me it reminds me, and I said this in the review, of a single-ended triode amp, but with like big power, big balls behind it, right? It has some drive and slam. Um, so it's a really unique sound. And I think they, I don't know why they called it Choco sound. Some people think, ooh, it's gonna sound like chocolate syrup and be overly warm or bloated, but it doesn't sound like that. It's a warm leaning amp, but it still retains transparency. It still retains that holographic imaging. It has a nice bass oomph to it. So it provides a little bit of that warmth. Really, really fantastic and unique, beautiful little amp. Again, will not break the bank. It's under 1800 bucks. And uh, I've been listening to it on and off. I put it in from time to time and I listen to it for a few nights. And then I go back to something else. That's the beauty about having all this gear here. I can constantly reevaluate, and I still love the Choco Sound EMEI. I'm actually, when I run it, I'm running it with the Kinky Studios, who makes Choco Sound, Earth Cables, and it's a match made in heaven. So if you can, if you haven't yet, check out the Choco Sound EMEI. As with the rest, I'll link to the review in the description below. Let's keep this train rolling right along. So we're getting down to the top four. And in my number four spot, you know, I thought I took some time thinking about the top four and where I would put this set of, of audio gear. I'm talking about the Daniel Hertz, Ava and Amber systems. And in general, I'll just say Daniel Hertz in general. They sell the Maria amp and they have a variety of speakers that are mated to each amp. So if you buy the Ava system with the small Ava speakers, your Maria is tuned to those Ava speakers. If you buy the Amber system, your Maria is tuned to the Amber system. There are so many unique things about the Daniel Hertz system. Uh, it has technology created by Mark Levinson, and it's different. The amps are different from anything else that I've experienced. The, the way they're made, the way they look, the way they work internally, the way the DAC chip works, which is not even really a DAC chip. So the Maria amps do the digital to analog conversion inside, but Mark Levinson says it's not really a DAC chip in there. He has one chip called Mighty Cat, and it pretty much does all the magic within the Daniel Hertz line. There's only one dealer for Daniel Hertz in the United States, as far as I know, and it's John over at Lone Crow Audio. He's the one who hooked me up with Daniel Hertz. I reviewed the Avas. I loved it so much. Mark Levinson contacted me and said, hey, do you want to check out the Ambers, which are bigger speakers, source point? I did that, and uh, there was kind of no going back. I couldn't take it out of the room. So that they still reside as my reference system right here. Now, the Daniel Hertz systems are not uh, inexpensive. They are going to cost you some money but they give you what you pay for back in performance, in uniqueness, in looks. They're like a bespoke 
piece crafted by artisans. And Mark Levinson tells me that's exactly what it is. Uh, the sound quality is big. Uh, since my review of the Ambers, um, Mark Levinson sent me the le final tuning for the Maria and Ambers, and it really beefed up the sound, made them even bigger. They're still clear as a window, but they have much bigger bass, more mid bass, and they just have a fuller presentation. I'm really, really loving the Daniel Hertz Amber system. Um, since I reviewed them, the prices have went up. I think the little Ava system, which was 14 grand for the amp, the DAC, the speakers, the cables, and now that's raised to 19 grand. The Ambers are now 24 grand, um, but they're still a killer, killer system. And probably the finest sound I've ever heard in my personal space, no matter where it has been that I lived over the last 35 years. So why isn't it my number one? It's because of the money. Not everyone will buy or can afford a piece of audio that costs that much money. But hey, welcome to 2023. Let's hope 2024 uh, cools down the prices in the world on a few things. But the Daniel Hertz systems are unique. They're bespoke, they're quality and they just sound absolutely beautiful. So if that is something that is within your budget, uh, it would kind of be a crime to not audition Daniel Hertz, uh, or at least try to hear it if you can. So Daniel Hertz in my number four spot. Now we're gonna get to the nitty gritty, the top three. So number three is something that none of you probably would have ever guessed, because I didn't do a video review for it. Uh, I only did a written review, and it's a long, extensive, detailed written review. And this is one of the finest integrated amps that I've had the pleasure of hearing and evaluating in 2023. It's actually a receiver, and it's not the Yamaha RN1000 I reviewed. It's the Yamaha RN2000, which is in another league from the 1000. As good as that 1000 is, the 2000 is more of a higher end sounding piece. It just has a refinement. It has a beefy sound, a liquid sound, and it has everything inside that you could ask for. It comes with a mic for room correction. Uh, it has a built-in DAC that's actually very, very good. Um, it has uh, all kinds of features. A streamer is built into this. You have VU meters, legit VU meters, not electronic ones. Um, it's just an overall gorgeous, beautiful piece. And I'll be honest, if I didn't have the Daniel Hertz Maria, I'd probably have the Yamaha RN2000 in the system right now where it sat for a few weeks where I listen to it every day. Now, this is not the same sound of Yamaha past. Yamaha in the past, at least with the older series from a few years ago, they always had a unique sound. You could tell it sounded like a Yamaha. And for me, they were a little, a little lean in the mids, uh, a little forward in the mids, but a little, the bass was lacking or something was off. Um, I love Yamaha and I loved their flagship pieces, but it wasn't my favorite for sound quality. But now their amps seems to have changed uh, the way they sound and they sound full, big, holographic. They image like a champ and the piece is just solid as all get out, noise free, one of the most beautiful integrateds I've seen this year and heard. The Yamaha RN2000 comes in at $39.99, so it's $4,000, but it is well worth that cost. How does it sound compared to, say, my Daniel Hertz Maria, which is a $13,000 amp? It's different. It's not the same. The Maria is a little more refined, a little smoother, um, and the Yamaha is a little more punchy. Uh, maybe not quite as refined, where the Maria sounds like analog on steroids, the Yamaha gets really close to making digital sound analog, especially if you use an external DAC. But as a one-piece all-in-one, it is mighty, mighty fine, and it's all almost anyone would need. Just add your speakers, and you are set. The Yamaha RN2000, I'll put a link in the description below to my full written review. Top two. So number two is more of a recent review. I've had this here for, it feels like a couple of months now. I don't even know how long it's been here, um, but I've been listening to it every single day. 
I've not had any real issues with it. It's actually super gorgeous. The most beautiful hi-fi piece I think I've ever reviewed. I'm talking about the Hi-Fi Rose RS-130 flagship streamer. If people tell you streamers do not make a difference, they don't know what they're talking about. Streamers make a difference in sound, and I'll say it again, as long as your system is up to the task of revealing those differences. If you have a $500 system, a $5,000 streamer is not going to do you any favors. But if you have a system that you can hear the differences when you swap components, even down to cables, then you are going to hear a massive difference with the RS-130. Now, I've heard tons and tons of streamers. You have the streamers that are under the $1,000 or $2,000 price point, the EverSolo A6 and A8, the Blue Sound Node, the Node X, the WinPro Plus. Um, I've heard the Lumen U1 Mini, U2 Mini, Lumen U2, which I raved about. The RS-130, for me, bests the Lumen U2 for many, many reasons and in many ways. Now, the features of the 130 are that it has fiber Ethernet and fiber USB to cut down almost any noise that's in your system. Um, you don't have to use it that way to gain the benefits, though. I'm actually using it with my regular old Ethernet, and I'm using the coax out into my Maria. And it is a night and day difference between the, say, Node X I had in here, the Ever Solo I had in here. It just provides a sound that is, I've said it before, like analog on steroids, and it mates so well with the Maria. And one other thing I have yet to talk about, I'm going to talk about it next. This streamer is probably, I've figured this out over the past eight weeks, the most important piece in my system. If I switch to, say, the WinPro Plus, my sound flattens, it gets a little harder sounding. And I'm talking about just as a streamer. If I plug in the Ever Solo A8 that comes in at around two grand, the one I just reviewed, it gets a little better than the whim and the node and it adds a little more heft to the sound. But when I go to that RS-130, everything changes. The imaging is much more focused. The voices come out in the center right to you in a more pronounced way. There's zero hint of grain, hash, noise, hardness, leanness. The bass is remarkable. It allows us to hear those reverb cues that are in some songs and it just adds to the immersiveness of the sound. This is just such a beautiful music streamer, and that's all it does. It streams music. You can put a hard drive underneath if you like. If you want to put your own files there, you can throw a USB stick in the back and stream off of that. You can stream with Spotify, Tidal, Kobuz, um, using the Rose app. Now, I'll admit the Rose app is not my favorite control app uh, from streamers, but it is usable and it works. Um, what else can I tell you? These have, um, there's so much tech inside of the 130 from the way that it has an SSD drive, not for serving music, but for caching your music, right? So that way, when you're scrolling through songs and streaming, I use Spotify Connect a lot, uh, but with other streamers, I get lags sometimes. If I skip three songs forward or four, there'll be a lag and I'll have to reopen the app. There's no lag with the 130. And the only other streamer I've used where there was no lag was the Lumen U2, which is around $5,000 as well. Um, but whether I'm listening to Tidal, Koba, Spotify, the sound is just glorious. Um, I had a silver one here. I bought the demo from John at Lone Crow and everything else in here is black. So I ended up swapping it out for a black one. Uh, and I got to say, they're both beautiful, but... My heart's really settled on the black. It just looks classy and stunning. And it's more about looks because it's sound. So the Hi-Fi Rose RS-130 looks beautiful. The build is top quality and the sound is glorious. And that is why it is my number two pick of all of the items I've reviewed in 2023. It's quite remarkable, though there are a couple bugs with it because uh, when they released it, Hi-Fi Rose said it was Rune ready, right? Rune endpoint, right? But as of yet, as of end of November 2023, it still has not been certified by Rune. So those who bought it to use with Rune, they're stuck. They can't connect it to Rune until this certification goes through. 
that's kind of a bummer. I have Rune as well. I'll wait till it gets certified uh, and then I'll use it with Rune and I have no doubts that it will be certified. Actually, I think it's going to be done fairly soon. That's my prediction. All right, let's move on to the number one product, my all out favorite piece of gear that came through my hands this year in 2023. All right, number one, numero uno, the finest piece I've had in all year that impressed me in regards to sound, performance, and cost. Remember, I do put cost in here. I'm not just talking about the all-out best in sound, though these get close. I'm talking about the Bucard Audio Anniversary 10 speakers. They're still here. I've had them here since the launch, before the launch. And I've been listening to them for the past week nonstop. And they've just been blowing my mind. I found a way to improve the sound and it's quite dramatic. I'll talk about that in a minute. And man, they just blow me away. The bass, the bass from these is remarkable. I still haven't heard a speaker, big or small, with the bass performance of the Anniversary 10s. And I don't know how it's done. Um, it, it's, it's remarkable. So there's not only the lower bass, these go down to about 20 Hertz. It's also, there's some mid bass there that's missing in a lot of speakers. There's so many speakers I hear where there's a big bottom end and a nice crisp top end. And the mid range is a little recessed because they're trying to keep it so clean and clear. These manufacturers are afraid to pump up the mids too much because we can obscure some of the details. Now the Bucards pump up the mids a bit. There is a nice punch. If I'm listening to metal, I can jam it to near concert levels in here. They never strain, they never get ragged or hard. They just deliver that smooth, huge concert-like sound to the room. Uh, if I'm listening to jazz or close mic vocals, it brings that intimacy to the performance. If I'm listening to EDM, uh, the whole room is just bouncing with a beat and I'm hearing the details, I'm hearing that bass thump, and I'm hearing the mid-range as a full-throated, grooving mid-range that doesn't obscure all the details. And that's one thing that's really cool about the A10s. There's different tunings. You could download them from the Bucard website. They give you a USB drive. You can try any tuning you want into it. It takes about a minute, update the tuning on each speaker. And there are tunings for for uh, brighter highs, uh, more information in the highs. There's tunings for more bass. There's tunings for um, a flat response. There's, there's several tunings. And right now I have it on flat. I did the room correction because these also come equipped with room correction. And the room correction really, really improved the sound. I've done it multiple times. I redid it again the other day. And uh, it's just really mates the speakers to the room perfectly. Now, when you go to order these, they come with two options now. The Platin Hub, which is the black box like I have here. That's the least expensive option. And they have one from Premier. I think that's how you say it, Primair, Premier. And uh, that's a thousand more dollars. But Mads Bucard told me that is a, uh, it will improve the quality of the sound as well. Now, here's one thing I tried for kicks. The Platin Hub allows you to hook up a turntable or an analog source, as well as a digital source or two. So I hooked up the EverSolo DMP A8 streamer, as well as tried the Hi-Fi Rose RS-130 streamer going into the Platin Hub and streaming from that or those instead of the Platin Hub. I noticed when streaming direct to the hub, the sound can be a little bit too warm. The details aren't fully there. It still sounds fabulous. But when I use one of these streamers, so if I use the A8 into the Platin Hub and stream to the A8, the sound gets more open, more clear, but yet the bass remains. It just sounds more refined. If I hook up the RS-130 to it, whew, mind blown, I'm starting to sound, hear the sound of something I think is a $30,000 system. Um, with the Hi-Fi Rose RS-130 into the Platin Hub, going wirelessly to the speakers, which only require a power cable each. There's no other cables you have to hook up. The sound is just mind blowing, um, unbelievably good. And I've had them here 
Uh, for months and months, and especially over the last week or so, I've been really, really getting into them. And I love them more today than when I did that glowing review for them. This is a solid product. You can get a set with the hub for four to 5,000, depending on the color, depending on the options. Uh, I would suggest picking up the Premier hub for it because I think you're going to get better sound quality, that more openness to them. But these uh, have a sound stage that's big. They do imaging. Uh, there's some three dimensionality going on. And man, these just sound good with any music I play through it. It's almost like they're chameleons. And, uh, you know, you don't need the DAC. It's all built in. You don't need an amp. It's all built in. These are powered speakers. Um, it comes with a beautiful remote control um, that is just stunning to look at and operates flawlessly. So my highest, highest recommendation for the Bacard Audio Anniversary 10 speakers the finest, I think, product, my favorite product I've reviewed all year, and it's far from being the most expensive. You can get a high-end, room-filling, just immersive, grab-you-by-the-heartstring sound for under five grand, and you don't need anything else to go with it unless you want to improve it. So you can do that by adding a dedicated, nice streamer to it. For example, if you say under 10 grand, you can have the hi fi Rose streamer, the speakers with the Platinum Hub under 10 grand, and you are all set and you have a system that will blow your mind and anyone else who listens to it. As you can tell, I love the Bucard Audio Anniversary 10s. They speak to my soul, they offer the sound I crave, and there's nothing lacking from them. So be sure to check out the Bacard Anniversary 10s. I just went to their website and it looks like they're back ordered by a few weeks, but uh, I think they say four weeks they're predicting to ship. So it's a very popular speaker for Bacard. Owners I've read are loving them. So uh, yeah, top, top end all the way. Highest recommendations and you're getting something that's going to sound much better than what you're paying. So two thumbs up. All right. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed my list of the top 10 favorite products that I've reviewed in 2023. I look forward to what 2024 has to offer or what that will bring us. I still have some reviews for 2023 to come that I am slowly working on right now. It's been pretty busy around here with other stuff, but uh, all that's coming soon. If you like what I do here, thumbs up, subscribe, feel free to leave a comment. And I will see you in the next one. I love you all. Bye.